Hello and welcome to HITC7's and today's video, which is pondering the question if every country had to send out a uh, five-a-side team for some kind of five-a-side World Cup, uh, which country would have the strongest five? Um, I did actually put up a poll on Twitter saying should I do five-a-side or seven-a-side and the votes were slightly in favour of seven-a-side, so naturally I'm doing five-a-side. The reason for that just being that um, so as someone pointed out, um, Jake, I believe, uh, pointed out, it's seven would be more reflective of the natural order of which teams are the best in the 11 a side game, obviously, the closer you get to 11, the more it's going to reflect that. Whereas five a side gives the chance for some teams who maybe have a handful of good players scattered amongst the more mediocre ones to, um, get rid of those mediocre ones and uh, have more of a chance. So I decided to go with five. Um, I'm happy in the future to do a video on um, an all-time seven-a-side team or a current seven-a-side team or both in the same video, what would be sort of my dream uh, seven-a-side team. Uh, I should point out, I haven't just picked the five best players, you know, the best goalkeeper, defender, two midfielders and a striker or anything like that. Um, there's a bit more to it. I've tried to go based on the five-a-side game, which I think uh, most people would agree is based heavily on you know, your touch, technique, close control, things like that. Um, players move with a low center of gravity. Um, it's not much use having a six-foot-five clogger in there that might be handy in 11-a-side. Um, not that there are many cloggers in the international game, but um, yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. These aren't necessarily who I think are the best players, five from these countries, but who I think would be the best for five aside. I've already recorded this video once and it was about 20 minutes long. So I'm gonna try and rattle through the countries a little bit quicker than I did with my first take. Uh, so we'll start with England, where my five are Jordan Pickford in goal. Harry Maguire is the deepest player, uh, sort of midfield too. Obviously, everyone covers all ground in five aside pretty much, but um, the next two would be Alex Oxley Chamberlain and Raheem Sterling, and then Harry Kane uh, poaching. Um, lots of alternatives. Uh, I think Jaden Sancho, probably brilliant in a five aside scenario, but I found it difficult to fit him in. He'd probably have to come in for Sterling. Some people might not play Kane, would say he wasn't perfect for five aside which is true, but I think he's too prolific. Uh, I want him in my team, so he's still included. Harry Maguire, good ball-playing centre-back. Uh, didn't want to leave him out. Um, obviously, Sterling is always going to be in. Uh, other players who could have made the cut, Jack Grealish, uh, Callum hudson Doy, uh, James Madison. Um, there are lots of talented uh, English players, obviously, at the moment. So, uh, yeah. But that's my five, anyway. Next up is France, reigning world champions, but would they be five-a-side world champions? Let me know in the comments. Uh, in goal, I've got Hugo Lloris. The deepest player I've got is Angolo Kante. Paul Pogba ahead of him, and then Griezmann and Mbappe. Um, obviously, France have uh, unbelievable depth. It's hard enough whittling. Uh, French players down to a squad of 23, never mind five players. Uh, Centre-backs in particular, I haven't got any of them. Could have picked up a TT, Varane, uh, Laporte. Uh, but I've gone with Kante. Um, there tends to be an overhead height rule in Faberside, so Kante should be at no disadvantage there. Uh, if I had to change it, I'd probably bring Laporte in for Pogba and just move Kante further forward. But I think Paul Pogba at his best, would be a good five-a-side player. So that's my five for France. Then we come to Brazil, the Samba stars of Brazil, who historically have been tailor-made, I would say, for uh, futsal and five-a-side. So in goal for Brazil, you could have either Alisson or Edison. Um, I think Edison is perhaps even better with his feet than Alisson, in my opinion. So uh, on those grounds, you could maybe edge towards him. But Allison's been so good recently and is Brazil's uh, routine number one. So I've gone with Allison in goal. Thiago Silva as the sole um, defender in the team. 
And then a three, an interchangeable three of Coutinho, Firmino and Neymar. Um, I mean, you couldn't ask for much more, could you really, than those three in five aside? Both, um, both, all three. Um, so good on the ball, creative. Uh, even Firmino, pro probably some people would think the least of the three is just exceptional in tight spaces. Um, again, Brazil have many, many players who could have gone in there. But I think, I think that's the strongest fight for them. Then we come to Argentina, who, uh, as always, have problems uh, in defence, and particularly central defence. So I would quite like to have had a midfield player in there, a little bit like France. But I couldn't quite stretch as far as putting Santiago Ascocibar in there. Um, obviously, those of you who watched... Um, who watch all of my videos, will know I've talked about him a couple of times in the past. He recently signed for Hertha Berlin, uh, returned to the Bundesliga from Stuttgart. Um, I almost put him in, but in the end, I couldn't justify it. So I've got Sergio Romero in goal, Manchester United's backup. Nicolas Otamendi in front of him, who can be a car crash, but maybe five aside would um, you get away with a little bit more. Maybe, maybe. You can't be out of position as much, can you? Uh, then you've got Dybala and Messi with Aguero, uh, even more advanced than those two. Uh, again, Argentina going forward, there's so many players, you know, there's no Acardi in there, uh, no Di Maria, um, many more. But uh, yeah, Di Maria is probably unfortunate. He's probably interchangeable with Dybala. But those are my five. Then Belgium in goal, Thibaut Courtois, Jan Vertonghen in front of him. Then Eden Hazard and Kevin De Bruyne with Romelu Lukaku uh, poaching as uh, Kane would with England. Again, maybe Lukaku isn't tailor-made to five aside, but um, he's Belgium's all-time leading goal scorer. Uh, he's sensational at international level. Some would make the argument for playing Hazard through the middle, maybe. Um, through the middle, well, not it's five aside, I don't remember. But playing Hazard instead of a striker and then moving his brother Thorgan or Yuri Thielmans or someone like that into that midfield role. Um, Moussa Dembele would be an excellent five-a-side player, I think, but uh, would be generous to put him in right now, playing in China. So those are my five for Belgium. Then we come to Portugal, who have Rui Patricio in goal. Still Pepe, centre-back, I think maybe 36, 37 now, but he's still my choice. Bruno Fernandes, maybe Manchester United bound, uh, Bernardo Silva, and Cristiano Ronaldo, quite obviously. Uh, again, Portugal um, are a team which in the past you might think would look stronger 5 aside than 11 aside, but they have strength all over the pitch right now, um, by and large. So uh, there were lots of options there, but I think that's Portugal's strongest five. Then we come to Croatia, World Cup finalists in 2018, of course. We have Livakovic in goal, uh, Marcelo Brozovic, a little bit like France, have gone with a midfield player as the deepest player. Um, he's been brilliant for Inter Milan. Uh, could do everything a defender could do in a five-a-side game. Um, and I think better than any of Croatia's defensive options, which is surprising with Dejan Lovren being the best centre-back in the world. But that's my choice. Midfield of Modric and Rakitic, of course, and Mario Mandzukic up front. Mandzukic, another one who you might say is more suited to 11 a side than 5 a side, but I think still uh, is worthy of a place there. Um, obviously, Croatia have a couple of very good wingers who you, you could pick instead of him, but I haven't. Uruguay. Now this is probably the most unusual of the of the lineups. I've gone with Fernando Maslera in goal, and then a two-two formation. As if you have formations in power side. A two-two formation of Diego Godin and Jose Jimenez as the defensive players, and Edinson Cavani and Luis Suarez up front. So, whilst everyone else has opted for, I've opted for with everyone else. No one's picked these other than me. Um, tricky midfield players, lots of gal and creativity and close control, touch, that type of thing. Uruguay, just two sort of, you know, rocks 
in defence and two prolific goal getters further forward. Um, but they are probably Uruguay's four best players and uh, it would add an interesting dimension to the tournament if this were really to happen, which it isn't. Then with Spain, we have David Heyer in goal, Sergio Ramos, um, Sergio Busquets, and then David Silva and Isco. David Silva has, of course, retired from international football, but um, that doesn't rule him out of this fantasy uh, by the side tournament. Um, you could make a case for lots of players. Um, PK instead of Ramos, Thiago Alcantara instead of Busquets, um, actually playing a striker. But I think um, David Silva got a lot of goals for Spain. I think Isco would be an amazing five-a-side player. So those are my five. Then we come to Italy, who are the first team that I've lined up in a sort of 1-1-1-1 formation with Gianluigi Donnarumma between the sticks, Giorgio Chiellini as the centre-back or enforcer in five-a-side, Marco Verratti, Lorenzo Insigne and Ciro Mobile. I would call Italy the dark horses if this were uh, actually going to happen because um, they've got a bit of everything. They've got real dogged defensive uh, nous in Chiellini, brilliant um, technician in Verratti, really real creativity with Insignia, low center of gravity. He'd be a, a good five-a-side player, I think. And then goals galore with Immobile. So um, yeah, I think Italy are, uh, would be a candidate. Germany have Manuel Neuer in goal. I've gone with Niklas Zula as the centre-back. Uh, Ilkay Gundogan and Tony Kroos, joined by Marco Reus. So many players with Germany that I've left out there. Uh, Joshua Kimmerk, uh, Thomas Müller, uh, Timo Werner, uh, Leroy Sane. Loads and loads and loads of players. But those, I think, would be the five. Jerome Boateng, if he was at his best, you know, saw 2013 to 15, would be maybe the perfect um, five-a-side defender. But now I, I've gone with Zula. Um, I think he's the best German centre-back right now. Then we have the Netherlands, who have, I think, a surprisingly good five-a-side team, um, or surprised me at least. Jasper Sillison in goal, Virgil van Dijk as the defender, Frankie de Jong and Jorginho Wijnaldum in the sort of middle of the middle of the pitch, and Memphis Depay as the most advanced of the five. Um, I mean, that's pretty formidable, isn't it, really? Um, a good goalkeeper, the world's best uh, defender at the moment. Uh, two midfielders who have plenty of ability on the ball, especially de Jong. Uh, superb and Memphis Depay who um, was in rip roaring form this season before uh, that devastating injury uh, obviously should point out uh, this is if everyone was available you know I know that Harry Kane's injured and same with Depay and a few others uh, if everyone was fit and available these are the five then the last two are included not as genuine candidates to win but because uh, people from these countries watch a lot of HITC7's videos, and I like to reward that faith. So Scotland have replicated Italy's 1-1-1-1 formation with uh, Alan McGregor in goal, Andy Robertson, Scott McTominay in front of him. I think he's going to um, surprise a couple of people, maybe, at Manchester United. John McGinn ahead of him, who subscribers I know have long been a fan of, and James Forrest from Celtic as the most advanced player. Um, the only thing you'd probably say with that is it's surprising in a way that Ryan Fraser, after a sensational 2018-19 uh, season, isn't in there. But, um, you know, like the rest of the Bournemouth team, he's having a hard time right now. So those would be my five for Scotland. And lastly, the United States of America, who uh, watched the second most hitc 7s videos of any country. I've gone with Zach Steffen in goal, John Brooks as the centre-back uh, or most defensive player, Michael Bradley ahead of him, and then Fabian Johnson and Christian Pulisic. Um, Johnson largely on the right, Pulisic maybe operating, I say on the right, on the left, and Pulisic more on the right, I suppose, 
obviously again everyone covers every uh every blade of 4g on uh, a five side pitch but uh, that's how i've got them lined up here so which is the strongest obviously let me know in the comments my take would probably be that the strongest two teams were france and brazil for five side purposes i think probably those two stand out to me obviously there's belgium and uh, spain and argentina and there's a lot of strong looking ones but i think i think those two Uruguay would be interesting because maybe they could just sort of shithouse their way to the title with uh, two real enforcers and two uh, goal getters. And we know that Luis Suarez would do anything, anything to get them there. But I think if I had to pick between France and Brazil, I'd edge towards Brazil. I just think Coutinho, Firmino, and Neymar um, would be perfect in a in a five a side game, uh, and I think they'd edge it. But let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, like I say, I can do a seven aside video and all time and a current one mashed into one. Um, thank you all for watching. Give us a like if you did enjoy it. Uh, leave your comments below and make sure you are subscribed, obviously, to HITC Sense.